to start the campaign. Gotcha questions, a points decision to Labor in the first debate, and now their leader, Anthony Albanese, has COVID. A huge few weeks for the Federal Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, and he joins me live now from Melbourne. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. As you, as you say, it's been a pretty tumultuous uh, start to the campaign. Absolutely. And it was pretty tumultuous last night. We saw Liberal candidate for Warringah, Catherine Deves, refuse media at a function last night. What did you think? Oh, well, look, those were the decisions that they take on the ground. But I think you know, the bigger picture is uh, the battle that's playing out between the Coalition and the Labor Party on economic management, because we know that we've got the plan to create 1.3 million new jobs over the next five years. We've got the plans to cut taxes, to back small business, to invest more in manufacturing. And we've seen an unemployment rate, despite the biggest economic shock since the Great Depression with COVID, uh, fall to 4%, uh, the equal lowest in 48 years. That's in stark contrast, Tim, to what it was under the Labor Party at 5.7%. And we know that the Labor Party just three years ago promised $387 billion of higher taxes. And Anthony Albanese was saying that Labor had a strong mandate for that. And he's shown no economic plan uh, for the future, no plan to create jobs. So that's what the key focus for us is. And I'm, no doubt for Australians is going into the ballot box. And we've got time to talk about that focus. But just on Catherine Deves, uh, you were critical of some of the language used by her. Is there a difference between you and the PM on whether she should be running for the Liberal Party? It's been a pretty ordinary start. No, there isn't. Uh, but I have been critical of what I consider to be unacceptable, insensitive and inappropriate uh, comments. Um, there is no place for you know, analogies with the Holocaust uh, in, the, in the context of you know, modern debate about public policy issues, um, albeit uh, very legitimate ones about fairness and, and the level playing field in, in female sport, for example. Um, and, you know, we've seen even in my own electorate um, the, the, uh, the fake independent having to make an apology about uh, her previous social media posts in this regard. Um, people have to be a lot more sensitive uh, when, uh, when invoking um, the tragedies of the past. Now, you just mentioned it. Your opponent, Monique Ryan, is throwing a huge amount of resources at winning your seat of Kuyong. Are you confident you can hold on? Well, I'm confident that I can, you know, I'm going to continue to work hard and that I've won the, the trust of my community and the confidence of my community uh, on four previous occasions. But I never take anything uh, for granted. What we do know is that they are fake independents. Why? Uh, because they're acting as a political party, they're being backed by the Labor Party, um, they have unlimited resources. In the case of my political opponent, they're long-standing former members of the Labor Party, where they sought to cover up that, uh, that political history and describe themselves as political clean skins and, 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 and falsely small L liberals. Um, that's clearly not the reality and, and that's clearly not the truth. But the key thing for the people of Kuyong and indeed uh, in the other seats where these fake independents are running is what is the detail behind these fake independence policies? There is none. There's no costings, there's no funding, there's no plan to deliver on high fluted promises. Um, and what is more, they won't tell their local communities how they will vote on the other side of an election. And that's the key question. Uh, we saw Allegra Spender lean into the Labor Party in her debate um, with Dave Sharma just the other day. Um, that's sort of lifting the veil on what is, you know, I think an undeniable truth that these fake independents are in bed with the Greens and the Labor Party and a vote for them will be a vote for chaos, instability uh, and indeed a greater chance of a hung parliament. And they are targeting moderates like you, like Dave mm. Sharma. We had Jason Felinski here on the program for our weekly chat earlier and mm. he said it's dangerous, really dangerous. These were Jason's words because they're almost buying the hearts and minds of Australians or trying to. Well, they've certainly got unlimited funds. There's no transparency about those funding um, processes. Um, there's no transparency about who they will vote for on the other side 
of the election. Um, the Greens and the Labor Party are running dead in these seats. You can barely find a sign in across the electorates uh, for Green and Labor Party candidates. They're non-existent. It's because every Green and Labor supporter is backing the fake independent. But they have no plan for the economy. They have no plans for jobs. They have no plans to keep um, their communities safe. Uh, and what is more, um, they, you know, in many cases, are former members of the Labor Party, something that they've sought to, to cover up. So people need to understand what really is at stake. You vote for an independent, you are voting for greater uh, instability and, and chaos and a greater likelihood of a hung parliament, and that's not going to be in anyone's interests. They're made up of much more than just former Labor Party. Rob Ballew, and people will know the name, of course, because he's the son of former Liberal Victorian Premier Ted Ballew, has written in The Age he's now the volunteer manager of Monique Ryan mm. because he's lost faith in the leadership of the Liberal Party. Now, this is your opposition. Mm. Well, his father wrote a very powerful article uh, in the, in the age, um, just the day prior, um, his father being a Premier of Victoria, um, a moderate Liberal, uh, and someone who's strongly backing my campaign. And he made the point, as you've just made the point, that these fake independents are only challenging um, Liberals, um, and they're only uh, doing so um, because, you know, they want to grab the, the balance of power and create a hung parliament, and, and that I don't think is in anyone's interest. We've seen that movie before, and that movie uh, was during the Labor Party's time when they um, f uh, formed government with Windsor and Oakeshott and the Greens, and it was a very chaotic time, uh, and one that I think uh, created broader disillusionment among the, uh, the Australian population. The Solomon's deal with China has happened on your government's watch. Is the PM trying to distract from that by criticising Labor and uh, Richard Miles yesterday in particular? Well, we are concerned about um, these ongoing developments between China and the Solomons, and we're working with the Pacific family um, you know, to, to, to ensure that uh, you know, we continue to protect everyone's um, safety and security in the region. Um, but what Richard Miles has said in this speech, which there are reports today he provided a copy of to the Chinese embassy before he delivered it, are very concerning. Uh, Richard Miles was basically welcoming um, China's greater involvement in the Pacific, welcoming their increased funding commitments, dismissing the strategic uh, concerns. Uh, and so we won't take a lecture from the Labor Party about um, national security and defence, particularly because when Labor was last in office, defence spending as a share of the overall economy fell to just 1.56%, the lowest since 1938. We've increased defence spending to 2% and rising. We've got a major defence capability uh, plan in place, um, building new ships, purchasing new vehicles, mm. purchasing um, new, new uh, new uh, fighter aircraft because we recognise that we need to invest more in Australia's national security because our region is changing and there's this broader battle and you're seeing it play out in the Ukraine between autocracies and democracies and our region is becoming increasingly unstable. Finally, and it's very important, a lot of Australians are very nervous about the imminent interest rate rises. They've been through a tough couple of years. Mm. It's going to be a huge challenge for whoever wins this election. Well, the economy's in good shape, Rob, and you can see that in the head. I think we might have uh, just... And, yeah, we've and got, you can we've see got that in, back again. in business investment. Rob? Uh, um, we've got you back, um, Josh, now. Yep. OK. Thank and you. And just Thanks on that, just on that um, question on you... interest rates. Yes, so on, on interest rates, uh, what you can see is that um, the Australian economy... Uh, is, in, is in good shape. Um, we've seen that in the unemployment rate. We've seen that in the growth rate. Uh, we've seen that in the pipeline of business investment and indeed the pipeline of broader infrastructure investment. Um, but what we uh, do know is that the Labor Party will increasingly spend more on um, uh, across the economy and that will put um, unnecessary upward pressure on interest rates. So we're all for lower taxes. 
uh, were for more targeted spending. We've turned off that emergency economic support um, as the economy is strengthened. And you know, Tim, the the contrast is is very is very clear with the Labor Party. The Labor Party will always spend more. They'll always tax more, and the economy will be weaker under them. There'll be fewer jobs created. They can't be trusted. This is not the time, Tim, to change course. Treasurer Josh Rodenberg, thank you so much. Thanks, Tim.